Parquet here with VPX Baseball, and today we're going to talk to you a little more about your leg kick and how it affects the slope and what you're trying to accomplish down there at the plate. Now remember, we always train backwards, meaning we're going to see what the hitter does and how he reacts to your pitch to vindicate and validate what we're trying to accomplish here, and more importantly, is this actually effective, right? You got to stay away from any type of training that just says, hey, here it is. It's the cookie cutter kind of stuff. You come in and they go, this is what you're going to do, rather than actually asking questions about who you are, what's going on with your stats, getting some game footage so that they can formulate a better opinion or a better process to help you personally. Because cookie cutter is not the way to go, right? Check out our other videos in this lesson plan to help you more understand what we're trying to accomplish with your leg kick and all of the great byproducts that is going to occur, going to happen for you, right? So, as a former major league pitcher, I had to just make sure that I was stacked all the way through into foot strike. A good leg kick gives you that opportunity to stay stacked into foot strike. We're not trying to accomplish this, right? Because from here, there's too much that can happen within your delivery. There's too much time from this point into here that you have a different, a bunch of different movements that are going to be created in order to throw a good quality pitch. So a lot can go wrong. So again, we are creating a good leg kick motor patterning to keep you stacked all the way. And it applies to here, 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 foot strike, rotation, and throw, right? How you set up and how you start a lot of times will determine how you finish, right? So essentially, what we're gonna do in this one is talk about how to stay over the rubber in your leg kick and not drift forward. Because here's the number one thing that you have to remember in your leg kick and through your delivery. Your lower half just has to move from here to here, okay? Pretty short pathway. Your upper half, which is the hand, has to come down all the way around and get here. So it has a longer movement plane compared to the short, right? And a lot of times that's why you see guys who are top heavy, especially with slope, because they've already gotten here and this is still moving and it's gonna cause you to get sideways. Basically, you have to sink both up, right? In tempo, balance, and rhythm, okay? So today, we're gonna talk about our good leg kick here. This is for beginners and maybe even intermediate guys to where you're not moving forward. You're gonna come up, okay, and separate over the rubber. I was always told um, ideologically to separate behind the rubber. I'm not actually trying to do that, but that gives me a great point to separate back here and to keep myself gathered to where once I start down, then I can go forward because my arm is gonna come down with my leg. I'm gonna separate at the same time. And then that sinks both upper half and lower half into foot strike, right? So we're gonna kind of walk you through that. We're gonna get you over here on the back end. We've got Sean Ton over here, NC2A baseball coach. He's gonna help out. And we're gonna show you kind of how the ball comes out, right? Because at the end of the day, everybody, it's not about me, you, <laughs> your pitching coach or whatever. It's about what that hitter is doing to your pitch and how they're reacting. If they aren't optimized, well then you'll have emptier bags, right? So we're just gonna start out. I'm gonna go on the inside portion, which is opposite arm side, because that's the furthest distance that my arm has to travel. And I'm gonna start with just a nice, easy thing. Why don't we move you up in front of the plate on that inside, right? This is where you wanna start. It gets you locked in, right? Ground zero for us pitchers. So I'm gonna come up. And then I'm gonna make sure I'm good balanced, standing tall, right? And then from here, I'm gonna come down, try to get that, okay? And I wanna lock in that release point with the feel, right? So again, I'm gonna come up and then down, okay? I'm gonna work them to the outside here so I can get that one in, up, down. Okay. One more outside. Go up, down, okay? Now I know right here that I'm pulling, right? Ball keeps going on that side, it's because I'm pulling. The reason why I'm pulling is because I'm getting top heavy. So I need to stay stacked longer. So I'm coming down, but, I, but once I come down, I'm starting to drift too much with my upper half. So I need to stay stacked more, meaning this, here compared to down there. 
right? So I'm gonna stay stack more to hit this outside, which is arm side for me. Up, down. And there it is, right? So we're helping you problem solve your delivery, not just cookie cutter it and just say, here you go, right? So now we're moving back, let's go arm side. Same thing. Now we're gonna really think about staying behind the rubber here, right? Separating back in here, boom, up. And then I'm gonna separate back here, right? That keeps me stacked and keeps me on my back hip all the way through. Up, stack. Okay. Again, one more out there. Up, stack. Okay. Now we're gonna go inside on it. Up, stack. Feel good about that. To hit inside, to hit outside, you're gonna have to have different body positions. It's not the same. When I'm on a big league mound, right? I pitched a lot of years in the big leagues. A big league mound's gonna have two little steps where us pitchers land. And it's usually I'm competing against a righty. And he's gonna be here and here. One for 100 pitches. I mean, it's almost to the front of the actual cleat mark where you're seeing outside, inside, outside, inside, right? And then for me, inside, outside, inside, outside. And they're really small because I'm having to go longer and more directional, right? So again, more longer stacking on the inside, up, stack longer, okay? Now we'll go outside, not gonna stack as long, up, okay? Now the ball's high, we're not worried too much about that right now. Now let's watch the off speeds come out, right? Here we go, inside. Here's my curveball. Up, stack longer. Okay? I got out because I got too excited about right in here, right before foot plant. My foot was about that high off the ground, I got too excited and I got geeked up, right? Because I'm like, curveball, no. Nope. Gotta stay patient with your delivery. That's why we're staying patient here. Slider or curveball. Up, stack. There it is, okay? So you get the idea, if I stay stacked, now I'm gonna do it wrong. I'm gonna drift. Fastball, and you'll see the differences. Up, drift. Now I hit my spot, but I had to drag it there. Plus it dropped me and got sideways so that the hitter can see what's coming. Fastball, curveball, compared to Bam, right? So I'm gonna drift again. Here we go. Up, drift. Okay? You get the idea. Compared to this. Up, stack. Okay? One more over there. Up, stack. Okay? And then vice versa. Up, drift. What do you see, Sean? So when you drift early, I, as a hitter, I can see the hand way back here for one, and there's no this on that. It's just kind of like floating in versus when it's later, you're out front, it's like bam on me, and it's like this. Right? Plus, it gives you that extra whip at the end, right? It yeah. gets up on you, and that's what you have to have. Because hitters, you go 90 and they continually see it, most hitters will be able to eventually adjust. But if it looks 90 out of the hand, and then all of a sudden, when they start swinging, it just gets up on you because it's got that late life. Man, you're gonna be very successful. You can throw a lot of mistakes and still get away with it because hitting is all about timing, right? And ultimately speaking, staying stacked and having a separation over the, over the rubber is gonna help you here. Now, if you're a pro guy or you're more advanced because there's a lot of pro guys that do this, right? Where they go right here and they get up and go. So as, as they start, they go. That's fine, but they built this portion before they moved into that. That's an advanced move. And the reason why it's advanced is because it's a lot harder to stay stacked. But I'll show you how it kind of works here. We'll go fastball in, and you'll see I'll have to stay stacked longer, especially in the beginning. So I'm gonna, as I start, move forward. But you'll see this move, and I'm gonna exaggerate it as I go, and you'll see more tilt on pro guys because the lower half is leading them, leaving them. So and leading them. And then when they get down to slope here, 
The lower half comes down, it lowers because it's got a land, which brings your upper half in C. A lot more things can go wrong if you don't have the motor pattern or the experience. So I would highly recommend to start with up and then you go and then work into the pro kind of thing, which would be this right here, because we got to generate power, right? I'm going to start up and go at the same time. Okay. Now, if I did it wrong and I start up and I'm even, right? I'm going to get top heavy because I'm going forward. Watch this. I'm going to start up and go forward, basically a rush. I can't even, I don't even have time to get my arm up there. And I'm going to start pulling. So once again, fastball, do a pro way where you're starting up and going at the same time, leading with the front hip and your leg kick. Here we go. Okay. I'll get a strike in there. Here we go. And then doing it wrong, top heavy, I don't have the tilt when I start up. Big difference, right Sean? Yeah, but now again, when you're early, the ball literally looks like it's just like this. As well as I feel like I'm this way every time on the hitter when I do it wrong, which obviously we know I'm going to have to pull too many problems at goal, okay? So, um, let's go on the outside here, right? Now, if you have movement, right, and I threw a sinker, this helps because you stay in stack too when you when you separate theoretically over the back of the rubber even though you're going to separate here up stay stack okay got underneath that because i didn't stay stacked long enough here we go up stay stack there we go okay ultimately at the end of the day there's many ways to do your uh, leg kick right but we really want you to start right here. Once you come down is when you can start forward, right? So up, so again, up. Once my leg just starts to come down is when I can start my drive, my linear drive. As a pro guy, if you're gonna come up and go at the same time, you just make sure that you have more tilt so it compensates and counteracts and counterbalances the slope, right? Hopefully you like this, check out our lesson plan on leg kick and how it affects the rest of your delivery so that you can command and throw velocity, right? Uh, we've got a full line of products for you at our, on our website that'll help you get to the big leagues.